What inspired me to do this ride is I was in Thailand fighting uh, just a little over two years ago and I met two amazing fellow Americans that while they're training as well, they were combat veterans. They came back May of 2019, I came back June. We stayed in touch. However, while they were in Thailand, they were doing okay because they had something to focus on. They were training and, and fighting out there. So they had a regiment to wake up, train, they relax at the beach in the middle of the day, train again at night. When they got to Pensacola, they started hitting a bottle pretty heavy. They were self-medicating with their PTSD. One of them, they were drinking and driving, all kind of stuff. Um, that they had gotten a couple of wrecks while being drunk, but the cops seen they had an Iraqi veteran on the back of their sticker on the truck, so he let them go. Uh, finally, after a while, one of them, the younger Army veteran, I don't know if he went to Philly to the VA to get help. Um, they took him right away. The other guy, Eric, stayed behind and he began to drink up three-fifths of vodka a day until he died. Uh, he was, he didn't trust, he didn't want to deal with the VA, he had been there a few times and he had bad experience compared to Mike who went to Philly and had a good experience. From what I'm understanding, some were great, some weren't so great. Anyway, Eric died Memorial Day weekend of last year, so that's when COVID and all was going on and I was, I was down and out because my protection business was no longer because of COVID and all and I was just, I was regretting that I came back from Thailand. Then this stuff happened with Eric and I had another friend of mine find out if he didn't have a heart transplant. Within two years, he was gonna die. And then within about three weeks, I lost five people. Uh, my aunt passed one day, my, my father's aunt. The next day, my mom's sister's brother, I mean, mom's sister's husband died, my uncle, he died. So I lost like five people within two and a half weeks. I was really done out. I said, you know, um, I'm gonna do something to focus on other people and get out of my own, my own negativity. So I said, you know, I was, I was really sad about what happened to Eric and I lost another friend back in 2012, pretty much the same thing, drinking himself to death. I said, you know, I've always wanted to do things for veterans. I was in the army, but I was released uh, nine months in with a, they found a birth defect in my back. When I would carry the rucksack over 13 miles, I'd get a burning in my sciatic. A uh, drill sergeant would see me shaking my leg all the time while we walked. He wanted to know what was going on. They sent me, x-rayed me, that was it, I was out. They wouldn't deal with a little back issue. I always felt guilty that I didn't get a chance to go and serve and fight like my friends did. So I always had a passion to help veterans. When I had my tree business, I'd always give them a discount. When I found out it was a veteran or a disabled veteran, I'd, I'd, I'd try to do work almost free if I could. So I said, what can I do to really draw some attention? Because if you do something normal, it won't really get much attention. I've always had an extreme personality. So I said, you know, I'm gonna ride my bike somewhere as far. I said, what if I'd ride from home Louisiana to Shreveport? I said, nah, that's not extreme enough. So I said, I was gonna do tip to tip from Venice, Louisiana to Key West, tip of Louisiana to tip of Key West. Then I realized that that one piece from Venice to New Orleans was pretty much useless. I said, let me, what's my favorite place in New Orleans that's got to do with veterans? The World War II Museum. I love that place. A lot of history there, the D-Day the D stuff. So I decided to do that. Well, I've been building so much support during this ride and I'm seeing, I've stuck my head into a rabbit hole that I don't know how deep it's going to go with how much I'm seeing with the veterans get delayed, denied with the VA paperwork. Um, homeless veterans living out on the street, living in tents. Um, they won't go in shelters because the shelters overran with drugs and other stuff that they don't want to be around. They rather they feel safe in the streets. Um, the amount of suffering that I'm seeing with these veterans has put has every time I see or hear of more veterans suffering, it fuels the fire. I've built so much support over the last. I'm over almost. I'm almost 900 miles in right now. I've built so much support and so many people getting behind me that I said, you know what? I don't want this just to fizz out when I get to Key West. Everybody in America says in order for things to happen or be seen, they need to get to Washington. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna take my bike, I'm gonna make it to Key West, and then I'm gonna head into Washington, D.C. I'm gonna bring it to the capital. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm also stopping along in most of the main cities, and I find their service offices or the outreach programs that are dealing with the homeless veterans, because most of them holding a sign on the side of the road of lying. They're not veterans. Finding out the ones that can validate that they are veterans, and I try to buy them food, clothing, phone cards, bus passes, anything to help them. And I try to talk to them and let them know. I look them in the eye and tell them, you are not forgotten. 
we care about you, me and all these people I'm building up along the way, and we appreciate what you did. But I'm riding a bike X amount of miles just so people like you know who's down and out, you're not forgotten.